In this video, we are going to be talking about some up and coming mints, some major updates on some of the bluest of chip projects, as well as some projects that have recently minted. So after the merge, when we're talking about the market sentiment, things are kind of either it's going to move sideways or it's going to move down, in my personal opinion. As you can see, over the past seven days, it went from that 1.6 all the way to touching that one point, even under 1.3, right? For a lot of these projects of for Ethereum and the crypto market in general, a lot of people will buy before the news. And then once the news actually drops or some big announcement happens, typically people will usually dump, right? And from my experience, you know, holding different NFT projects and buying and selling, it's actually pretty hard for a project or even Ethereum in general to sustain its price after some kind of big announcement. Usually it's people gambling and speculating on the price going up, but really they're just going to dump it on people when as more people FOMO into a project. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying that if you are buying and selling, looking to trade or looking to hold, definitely want to be mindful of this because if you're holding, then you want to buy when things are dumping. And if you're trading, then you pretty much can assume that people will buy into a hype and then you can probably sell it right before the thing announces, right? And this also goes same with like the stock market and things like that it happens everywhere and pretty much in every market as long as people act irrationally. Now, the first project that we are going to be talking about is going to be Azuki. So recently over Twitter, if you kind of follow, you know, people who are into the Azuki community and things like that, they actually have been going pretty strong during a bear market. It seems like the entire community is rallying to like continue to keep this brand alive, to keep the excitement and interest in it. And I can definitely see that the Azuki team, when it comes from a marketing perspective, whether it's Zagabond or other people on the team or whether whether it's a Zuki account, I can see them engaging quite a lot with their community. So it's pretty obvious that they have some kind of, you know, social media strategy in order to continue to build interest within the project, which is very different from how, you know, other projects may communicate, even if they are a blue chip project. There seems to be two announcements that are coming up. I think one is going to be in the next week. The other one's going to be October. And pretty much how you know that is because if you look in the teasers for, you know, this little visual that dropped, if you look at the calendar, there's a specific day when something is supposed to happen. Again, it's not like it's going to happen for sure. It's just like a teaser, but a lot of people are speculating and they're buying and, and you definitely can see the price of Azuki pumping over the past few days because of that. People are anticipating something big happening. But remember, during the Ethereum merge, when the price pumped and then now it's kind of like dumping a little bit after the merge. So it's possible that Azuki is pumping now, but then maybe it might dump a little bit after because people buy the rumors and they sell the news. I don't know whether it's going to go up or down because there's so many different factors. Maybe a VC is just going to like buy a million Azukis and it could pump all the way to like 15 ETH. I don't know. So what will that news be? There's a lot of speculation on what it is even beans are pumping but i did want to bring up this one person adrian chang known to be an azuki supporter he swept i believe it was over 100 azukis over a certain period of time so he definitely has been accumulating if you didn't know this person is a billionaire who's part of a very successful family in hong kong but they are raising 500 million dollars to invest into crypto and private equity right so you might suspect that if this person is rocking an Azuki as his picture profile, if he bought 100 Azukis in his fund is trying to raise $500 million to invest in crypto and private equity, well, how much of that money could potentially go into Azuki? Maybe nothing, maybe something. It's all speculation at the end of the day, but a lot of the pieces kind of add up where Azuki is probably looking to raise money similar to how Doodles raise money, right? And they're probably going to raise quite a lot of money if they do decide to do that. I don't know if that's what they're deciding to do because they never announced anything, but I'm just kind of speculating based on what I'm seeing on Twitter and what the news is about. Other people who are Azuki holders and bean holders, they also speculating the same thing. That's most likely why the price is pumping. Definitely speculation is a real thing in the crypto space. So I really feel like that's something that's pumping up the price. For me personally, if I was looking to get in the Azuki community in terms of buying an Azuki, I would actually look for the price to go lower just because there's so much hype and the price raised so quickly within the past week that I feel like what goes up might potentially Potentially come down and if it goes up forever then it goes up forever then whatever right all right so next thing we're gonna talk about some new projects so enough of these blue chip projects we're gonna go into black dust so recently black dust they launched a little teaser on their twitter it looks pretty cool it's kind of like this video game kind of vibe but they're not really clear on exactly what they're building whether it's an ip brand game visual novel but the visuals definitely have caught a lot of people's attention we have been seeing this in parallax discord community and the alpha calls and shout out to sumo by the way who's the one who actually caught this in the parallax discord I'm actually someone on the team actually did also reach out to me as well but i do not know too much about what they are doing they have a pre-mint page up but there's going to be a supply of 10,207 50,000 spots will be available for pre-mint so if you want to check that out go for it and just so you know i'm not sponsored by them or anything i don't get any payment for this at all now when we look into the companies of who these guys are the animation studio the team that did the witchers is this project 
Netflix Japan, original creator of The Legend of Muay Thai. I haven't seen that one. So going on their website, one thing you have to really pay attention to is that it's not clear what their specific role was for these shows that they did. It's not clear if they did the directing, did they do the writing, did they just do like the outsource 3D assets or outsource like 2D assets because I'm not referring to this project specifically, but I noticed that projects in the past where they say like, hey, you know, we worked on these big projects. Well, it's like, okay, great. But like, what did you do for that project? Like, because if somebody did all the keyframes and then you're the outsource agency that just kind of fills it in, then it doesn't really require a lot of creativity. So there's a difference between creating an IP and like directing and storytelling and just outsource work, right? Based on their Twitter, they don't communicate what that is. But if you are looking into getting into this project, that's something you should definitely research because if you research into other projects that say hey you know we're a studio that worked on these projects well sometimes it's like well all you really did was like outsource work not necessarily like the creative direction right if they're going for ip you have to think about like who's the director who's the writer who's the director of photography and like all these different things that make quality animation good but if it's just an outsource agency that follows directions then it's like okay well what skill sets do they really have there right and then the other project that they also did though the launch pad that is working on this did whale together so i'm not too familiar with this project but it seems like they did tools in the past it doesn't really say much on their website and now when i'm going on the open sea it's like floor prices are all right i suppose 0.03 they got a little bit of volume i mean I, I don't know too much about this project but if you want to you know judge their work and see if it's something you should look into definitely look into their past projects to see what they could potentially do right all right so the next project that we're going to talk about is going to be okay bears right so okay bears you know it was once hailed as you know the solana project that was going to be the next board ape seems like they signed a deal with img which is the world's number one licensing agency so okay bears will they really use the ip and use it for different things that's definitely a possibility right okay so img's recent work fortnite lego tetris so basically they're just like connecting brands together okay bears is going to be the first web3 brand for img but they don't say what partnerships they're going to do so maybe you're going to see okay bears and fortnite i don't know right it's definitely interesting for sure to see how they're, they're going to play this out because if you're a project and you want to like study from other people well img is a pretty good person to study from because they're pretty good at ip right now there's no guarantee that be just because they work with img that it's going to be something like we definitely have seen other projects in the past partner up with like these big talent agencies or like whatever and sometimes they don't work sometimes they do work sometimes they don't right so just be mindful of that there's no guarantees so there's some news about pudgy penguins recently and that you they're now available on magic eden and you can purchase it using soul so magic eden is beefing up some of their functionality on their website where you can buy ethereum nfts using soul so if you're going on the pudgy penguins magic eden page you can see they have the price of these penguins on ethereum i suppose if you connect your wallet you can probably just convert soul then they'll do all the conversions for you and then bang. I think this is cool for Magic Eden because obviously they want to become a destination where people buy and sell NFTs. So maybe in the future, people won't really care whether it's on Soul or Ethereum. Maybe it'll just, everything will be cross-chain. I don't know, but that's definitely something I am paying attention to to see whether or not the market is receptive to this and whether or not other projects want to do that as well. Now, the next project that we are going to be looking at is one that recently minted, and that's going to be 50 Years of Atari. So from my understanding, it's going to kind of like a PFP utility pass. And going on their website, you know, you kind of learn more about what it really is. Personally, for me, I'm not really sure exactly what's going on. The website's kind of cool. It's different. It's like the Atari nostalgic kind of feel, right? So they're definitely using their legacy brand. It seems like they already have a lot of partners. It's very interesting to think about like whether or not these partnerships and collaborations are of something of value that the market finds valuable. Like I, I've seen that they've done sneakers with artifact studios in the past but when we're looking at the roadmap they're going to launch the nft collection cool they're going to do sandbox a lot of people have promised sandbox but i haven't really seen any good experiences where it would get me and all my friends to want to play in the sandbox redeem unstoppable domains that's like affiliate marketing in a sense so that's cool poster claim hard to say if that's valuable during this time in the market launch atari club to earn points not really sure what that is merch pass you know the narrative of merch is not super strong right now unless you're going to build like some really great merch reminder to call back don't know what this is book flights maybe a physical event maybe you get into the event for free maybe you get a discount not sure like i said before it's not really clear what they're doing i think they're trying to stack a lot of things if you think about it like this like let's say any other brand decided to do this roadmap and they weren't atari but they were a brand new web3 brand i don't think a lot of people would find it that interesting right but because they have a brand they're atari that 50 years of nostalgia and like branding more people will buy into this right i think if they lean on their nostalgic play that can be their key differentiator and probably have like a lot of ips that they can use but with the roadmap as it is i am personally not a fan i think 
think they can do something more interesting. But hey, you know, everyone has their own opinion. That's just personally what I feel. And so with that said, that is everything we got to cover in this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and make sure to follow me at Patrick Dank on Twitter. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.